Hey guys, today in this video we're going to be looking at the Flex Boss 21. I was in the middle of installing this unit and I thought I would stop, turn on the camera, and let you guys in on what I'm actually doing here. So I purchased the Flex Boss 21. For my situation, this inverter is going to be perfect. So my thoughts are what I'm going to have it do is I'm going to have it run my garage off grid and then I'm going to have CT sensors on the panel in the house. So if I have any extra solar or battery, I can backfeed that into the house and I'm going to have zero export turned on, which means that nothing is going to go to the grid. Let's say I turn on my dryer in the house and it demands, let's say 6,000 watts. This will push back some of the energy in order to help power the dryer, but not actually go back to the grid, which is key in my scenario. There could be future possibilities to install the grid boss into the house and run it that way. That would be kind of neat as well, but for now, the plan is I want to run this off-grid in the garage. Now in the past, I had all different kind of plans. I was going to use an off-grid inverter, and then I was going to use a couple of grid tie inverters. Actually, I'll show you one of them right now. Here it is here. So my plan was I was going to run a couple of these for leg one, leg two, to put power back into the home without going to the grid. But these are not the greatest. I have heard very many bad reviews about these going up in smoke and not working for very long. And this was old way of thinking. Now we have new technology out there where it's all in one, which is amazing. So this inverter can output 12,000 watts of AC and it can also output 16,000 watts if there's solar present. Okay, first let's take a look at how I installed this on the wall. So you get a template in the box with the unit and this is gonna show you where the bolt placements need to go on the wall. Now I used Unistrut on my wall because my stud uh, spacing is 24 inches, not 16 in the garage. So I used strut in order to go 24 inches to the bolting points and then mount the inverter onto the strut. And I'll show you what that looks like. But just quickly, one thing I wish they had added in on the template is there's also some uh, mounting points on the side here in order to level the inverter off the wall. And I wish they had to mark that on the template. I did it myself but it would have been nice just because I'm using Unistrut. It's, uh, it's kind of intended to be installed after. So you would put the top on mounting points and then you would put the bracing leveling brackets on after, but because I'm using the strut, I had to put it on first. And as you can see here, this is the two top struts and this is gonna be the leveling one to level the side. And you can see from the template here, which is how I got my spacing. And then I marked on here for that leveling one. So you can see, it would have been nice if they had to just uh, put that mark on there for people. Pretty much these two here take the full weight of the unit. And then this one down here, you can see there's a slider here. So you can actually adjust that away from the wall so you can get this level uh, off the wall nice and perfect. Now let's have a look inside of here. So this whole thing, is watertight. Uh, it's meant to be installed. It can be installed outdoors, but I would prefer to install it indoors. It gets a little bit too cold for it to be installed outside in my location. So I've already gone ahead and removed this cover. This is just a protective cover uh, that covers all of your connections. I took it off in order to show you all. It's just uh, three screws. Now you can see inside here, there's plenty of room to work. Uh, we have our knockouts on the bottom. The instructions do a great job of telling you the sizing of the knockouts. We also have some on the back here because there is a cavity in the back here that you can actually run out the back uh, and still have enough room to do any kind of angles or turns that you want to do with your cabling. Uh, up here, we actually have two locations that you can put your batteries in. So we have two positives, two negatives. So I could do a positive here and a negative here, or a positive here and a negative here if I'm running one battery string. But you can actually run multiple. So you can have one battery bank here and here and a second one here and here. They do recommend that all your batteries communicate together. I'm gonna hook this up because I have a battery bank, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, that has multiple different brands and they use multiple different protocols for their BMSs. So for the time being, I'm just gonna use uh, voltage to run this whole thing and I'm gonna have a shunt hooked up to Solar Assistant so that I can monitor the state of charge just through the shunt and not through the actual device. Maybe in the future, 
I'll do all EG4 batteries or all the same battery brand that's able to connect with the EG4. But for now, I'm just gonna use what I have. So over here, you could see the load and the grid in the past and some of the units, they also had generator, but now they've moved that location over to the grid boss. If you get that installed in the house, we have our battery breaker on and off for these battery posts here. And then we have our communication board and our PV hookup. Now our PV hookup, you can actually string them together inside of here instead of using a combiner box outside. Uh, personally, I'd use a combiner box outside just so that there's less conductors traveling into the house. Uh, but you can run, let's say, two strings and they will just parallel connect here. So you can series them outside, run them in, and then have them parallel connect in these blocks. So these first four here, so two positives, two negatives, uh, can do 26 amps up to, I think it's 600 volts. And then same with the second bank here, you can run uh, two strings to have them parallel up to 26 amps, 600 volts. And then this last one here can do, I think it's 15 amps up to 600 volts. And that's gonna only be one positive negative for uh, PV number three. On the side of the inverter here, you can see we have a rapid shutdown. So as soon as you press that, it's just gonna shut everything down. And then we have a disconnect for the PV right here. And another cool thing, you can see a little lock logo. Um, if that is pushed in, you can actually get a little pin through that hole or a lock through that hole. And that is gonna stop you from being able to turn this device on. So you can actually do lockout on this, which is a really good safety feature. On the door here, we have weather stripping. We have a guide here for all of the different amperages, it looks like, cable wiring. Let's take a look at this. They even have this, which shows you all the different connections, which is also stated in the manual as well. So with being in the process of wiring this all up and connecting it, I have the advantage of letting you all know what my plans are, and you guys can kind of help me along the way uh, if I'm missing something. So from my main panel into this panel in the garage, there's six cable, so three six cable. Um, that is gonna give me a maximum of 60 amps. So what I was planning on doing was once I get everything wired up, I'm gonna configure the unit in order to only take from the grid up to let's say 55 amps. I'll do the conversion. Um, you gotta do 60 and then I believe it's divided by 1.25 and then that puts you below what you should be at. You never wanna set right to 60 amps. Uh, right to what your max of your breaker is. You wanna go like, I think it's 1.25% uh, below that. Uh, but anyways, or it's 0.25%, I gotta look it up. So I bought a 60 amp disconnect and this is quite literally what it says. Right now it's disconnected and then it engages and now it's gonna allow the energy to pass through. So what I was gonna do was take the uh, six gauge cable out of the breaker that's in here and just bring that down to here and there's a knockout on the bottom. So I was gonna mount this right underneath here and I should have enough cable length to turn it and then bring it into the top end of the load of the lugs on the disconnect and then bring them out the bottom here. So basically it'll be bypassing that panel now and then coming out this knockout here and bringing that over and up inside of the unit here in the bottom. The load out, I was gonna have it come out, turn and then come into this panel and then go into the 60 amp. Well, there's a 100 amp in there now, but I need to change it to a 60 amp main breaker, but put it into that 100 amp main breaker. And then that's gonna be grid bypassing this, but coming into the disconnect, into the grid port and then the load coming back out into the panel, which is then gonna distribute the electricity into the garage itself. Now I also have, I've already run some CAT7 cable in order to go with the CT sensors. Now the CT sensors are these here, which these actually get clamped in your meter on leg one and leg two coming into the house. And I believe they're actually using CAT7 cable because this has metal on the outside here, uh, which tells me that it is um, 
it is shielded cable. This wire is shielded, so I ran Cat7 cable, which is the same connection as this, but it's a larger gauge than your typical cable, and it's also double shielded. So I have 130 feet of that running over to my house, and then I'm gonna run this uh, on the main panel and have that connect, the other end connect into here, which is gonna give me monitoring of how much usage I'm using and then if I, it's possible I can push energy back into the house, then it will on zero export. Now for my battery, I have all of these here. Uh, I have all the communication ports taped over because in the midst of moving, I didn't want dust or debris falling into those communication ports. But I have these. I also have the VATTER battery that I still need to plug into here. And then I have my cables running out. So I also have a 300 amp T-class fuse in there and that runs on the positive wire running out from this bus bar. And then the cables, now I'm still finishing the wall here. I'm gonna leave that open in case I wanna run anything through there. And then I've got my cable, which I am then gonna run somewhere here. I'm gonna have a bus bar here with the Victron shunt, and then that cable is gonna run over to the grid boss. So that is gonna be four aught cable as well. I'm also just noticing now that my eye looks really bad in the video. I believe it's allergies, I'm not too sure, but that's why it looks like somebody uh, smacked me in the eye there. Just to assure you, it's just allergies. It's not, uh, it's not me melting off. That's that. Now let's go outside and I wanna look at uh, what I'm gonna do for my solar for this unit here. Um, so for those of you who are longtime viewers of my channel, you might recognize this array. It was up a lot higher but I've now since just taken it down, put these patio stones and added some weight. Now this is under 2000 watts of power, so not enough to do this power station justice. This is gonna get me started. In the future, just behind this array, uh, you can see all these trees here and uh, not too sure if you can make it out, but there is a fence line right around there. So what I wanna do is take down some of these trees here and then actually put a solar array, I can put a large one. Like as you can see, it goes, what I have cleared now goes back to here and then to roughly about here. So I could put a really nice array across there. And then in the future, as I clear out more brush and more trees, I can add more down that direction there. And I have a trail right here. So I want everything to be behind this trail. You can see the tire marks there. So right from here back to that fence line, I have all of this to do solar in. And then on the other side of my uh, garage in the driveway, I have this two car carport. Uh, now you can see it's partially shaded. We're late afternoon, so I'm getting a bit of shading on the end there. So all I need to do is remove some of these trees here, or at least top them. And then that way I'll have full sun. But this, this whole roof line here, is actually facing south. So it's perfect for a solar array. And I can get a pretty big one up there. And one thing I like about it is it's got a good angle on it. So that's gonna be perfect for a winter array. So I'll classify this as the winter array. And then the one that's gonna be on the back side of the garage uh, is gonna be my summer array. So I know I said I could implement the grid boss into this system. Uh, something else I could also implement is I did purchase an automatic transfer switch by Generac. It was online. It was super cheap. A uh, guy never even wired it into his house. He just had it sitting in his garage and sold it for me for like 200 bucks. Now I can use a 12 volt power source and some uh, relays that are normally closed, normally open and configure them in such a way to trick the automatic transfer switch to engage or disengage during power outages. Uh, so I could also hook that up into my house because currently I do have a manual transfer switch. So swapping the manual for the automatic wouldn't be difficult at all. Uh, or I could do the grid boss. I have a variety of choices there as far as doing some wiring in the house, but that's going to be in the future. Right now, I just want to focus on getting power into here and running the garage off grid as much as I can with the small array that I have right now. And I'll still have the capability of that manual transfer switch to run off my uh, uh, Flexboss 21 as well. That's just a big long rant. Thank you for those who stayed till the end. 
there's anything you want to see about this. I know there's been a lot of questions over on Adam's channel. I'll leave links in the description. He did a great uh, talk with the guys from EG4. They want to see this thing torn down. So basically open up the cover in that. I don't think it would be too difficult. I don't really want to take the covers off of this. Uh, we'll see, maybe in the future I'll do it. Just looks like screws down the side and across the top and this side here. Uh, it doesn't look like it'd be too much of a feat. Maybe one day in the future, if I'm feeling, uh, yeah, and then these screws here. And a, a warranty void sticker. Oh, cause there's a screw behind it, okay. Yeah, so I don't know if I want to void the warranty or not. Maybe in the future, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to show you the, uh, the insides. That's the unit here. Again, thank you for staying around for the rant. I'm gonna do my AC hookups and then I'll show you all. I'm gonna focus on getting that battery cabinet up and running so I can actually get power into this to turn it on. Again, as always, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it and like and subscribe and thank you very much. Bye.